You might see a ghost. Jerry! Finally! You and I on a stream oh. talking about the music of a movie or show. I am so thrilled. Yeah. It is we have yeah. never tried this. This is a this is a oh, first. Yeah. Oh, and we yeah. happen to choose the best soundtrack of all time when doing this. I'm pumped. That's absolutely I... right. Yes, listen here. Listen, I gotta put my. Oh God, this proton pack is. Uh... There we go. There we go. We're hey, Jerry. we're good. We're good now. <laughs> Hello. How are, we, how are we feeling? What's up, everybody? Oh man, this is listen. Uh, it's good to be here tonight with you guys. It's I can't believe that me and Scott are actually gonna talk about a soundtrack. Yeah, and, it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, listen, you got uh, all this lovely. This song is just going to be playing on a loop for the next hour. <laughs> it's kind of a, what's going to happen. So. That's the plan. We're just going to talk over it. No problem. I ain't afraid of no ghost, Jerry. Are you? I ain't. I ain't afraid of. Uh, I'm afraid of no shit. No, it's no funny. Shit. We don't Nothing. know if it's going to get copyright attacked, so it won't in the podcast. If you're watching the video and it's just no audio, sorry. That's that's on it's you, dabbing. but the audio on um, any other page should work just fine. But uh, welcome. Yeah, this is actually very exciting because welcome. this is this is a great soundtrack to discuss. And of course, if you haven't actually ever heard of us, we're the Bomb Bad Cast. We do mostly Star Wars discussions, welcome. but right here we're talking about Ghostbusters. And and as the month continues, um, today you're listening to no. the Ghostbusters music discussion on March 5th. This Thursday, March 7th. We're looking at Ghostbusters Lost Media, which is going to be really fun. The cartoon, the comics, everything in the middle. Uh, on 312, which is next week, we're discussing the 2016 female-led Ghostbusters, which apparently is controversial if you have a vagina. Um, then if you, uh, on 314, <laughs> no, it's if, day, you, if you don't have a vagina, oh, that's the, pe the vagina. people, those are the people who typically have a problem with that one. Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah. They get upsetty spaghetti. Oh. Because of the oh, it sounds like somebody's about to get a ghost blowjob in the song right now. So, oh, oh, on uh, oh. on three fourteen, the uh, Ghostbusters game two thousand nine discussion with maybe Charlie Ashby, um, and then on three nineteen, right. Ghostbusters Afterlife oh, podcast. Up, then on three twenty one, the hype has been building to this Frozen Empire reaction review live. I can't wait! I can't wait! I'm so excited, it's man. It's gonna happen. This is really radio and of us. We're just talking over music. This is weird. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we don't typically do this. We don't typically no. do this. But yeah, no. Yeah, listen, Bustin does make us feel good uh, in does. more ways than one. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this is listen. You can you can honestly just yeah, let's just crank that down a little bit there because uh, <laughs> it has got like maybe ten minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is a weird soundtrack because. I don't think they realized how, at least to me, how much this would influence pop culture, especially the song by uh, Ray Parker oh, yeah. Jr. This is one of those songs that kids that I teach still sing. And not because yeah. they even know the movie. It's because it is a genuinely and very, very catchy song. So uh, what a better place to start off. Can we start off there and listen to the... Uh, the actual um, original from the soundtrack. Is that possible? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Cause we've got, so, and, and we talked a little bit about um, some of the behind the scenes with it, mm -hmm. you know, um, about how like he, he had a hard time, like kind of coming up with uh, this, this, uh, this theme song. Yeah. Ghostbusters. He's like trying to rhyme something with Ghostbusters. And then like he, I think he said he remembered seeing like that they did a commercial in the movie or something. And he was like, Oh, mm. We'll do it. It's a jingle. It's a jingle. Yes. That's how we do it. But this is this is one of the most if, if in my opinion. Yeah. And again, I'm pretty biased if you can't tell. <laughs> but uh for you if, you're tell video, all. if you're video, if you're watching video, I don't know if you can tell uh how biased <laughs> I am for Ghostbusters. But uh I I walked in a frame for our audio listeners wearing a full proton pack. <laughs> So um yeah it's uh it's pretty safe to say I'm I'm done for. I'm just I, I'm I, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm I'm ghostbuster pilled. I'm I'm ectoplasm pilled. Ectoplasm like, pilled. Yeah. But dude, I, dude, I, I, got a, I got an ectoplasm cream pie. I'm all here for it. For those that don't know, 
Ray Parker Jr. is a studio musician. So I kind of want to kind of give a little yes. bit back up on who he Let's is. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So I have it pulled up. Obviously, his biggest hit is the Ghostbusters theme, though those might not know. He was also in Barry White's Love Unlimited Orchestra, which means he played on a ton of huge hits by Barry White, you know, the classic R&B right. musician. Uh, he was in a band called Ray Dio, which is pretty clever. I like that. Um, and then he went solo after that. His solo actually was very important. And we'll kind of see what he contributed to, what he played on, because he was a studio musician. Um, a lot of his hits, obviously peaked at like the other woman is one of his biggest hits it peaked at number four in the u.s charts uh ghostbusters this is insane this is this is this actually gave me chills reading it just now i'm not kidding ray parker Jr. actually i'm gonna just show the tab so you can all see it for our audience yeah. listeners, audio listeners i'll gladly uh, tell you about it what you're looking at is the actual ghostbusters peak chart positions here we go it's called chart busters it's, they gave it that name chart busters <laughs> so u.s number one Number two in Australia, number one in Belgium, number one in Canada, number four in Germany, number four in Ireland. What's NLD? Number four in oh oh in uh um in Netherlands, Netherlands number five oh, in wow. Netherlands, number in New Zealand number two in uh Switzerland number three in the UK number two. Y'all, mm -hmm. this is in '84. This is like the peak of Thriller times. This yeah. transcended even that album. 84 and a bunch of huge albums come out, but this, this is actually yeah. insane. Like, I, like actually insane. Yeah, it absolutely just uh, smashed into the pop culture. Like it, 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 it hit like a lightning bolt, and it's we're still feeling the effects because it's, crazy. it's again, you put this on anywhere, and people are like, I don't, I, I don't know anyone who. Uh, here's this song and goes, uh, I don't really like this one. No, Except it's I hardly know anyone. I've there, I'm sure there are people. Um, it's instant classic. But yeah. It's just one of those where it's like, ah, oh, man, this is, you know, it's got a good beat, you know, it's got some great, like that, that, uh, keyboard. Like the, beat it, beat it. It's just, it's, oh. it's really, really cool. Really, We're really gonna cool. actually listen to it as well. But I wanted to mention one last thing. He produced hits for New Edition, Mr. Telephone Man, which is one of my favorite songs by New Edition. Mm. Mr. Telephone Man. Randy Hall, Cheryl Lynn, Denise Williams, and Diana Ross. He played guitar on several oh, songs yeah. for Latoya Jackson's 1980 debut album. And, of course, he worked with Run DMC when they kind of remixed the song in a rap. Okay, so he yes. is very well known. He has a Hollywood Walk of Fame star as well. He, I don't know, he's just one of these guys that I think a lot of people don't realize his impact and the influence he had by playing other studio shows. So, without further ado, let's listen to some ghost. Oh, hold on. This is, this is saving the day. Oh, yeah, it is. Hold on. If you want to play the, no, we got the, the, the Ghostbusters theme. That would, that would have been pretty funny, though. It would have been pretty good. That would have been pretty funny. Yeah. I uh I think it's better to listen to it than um rather than watching the video just in case, you know what I mean? I say I agree. I agree. Because the vid this this you can let your mind explore. Yeah. Does this song mean a lot to you? I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It, it does. Um, yeah. It, so this always uh just brings me back to like my my childhood, my early childhood, you know? Yeah. Like it takes me to Saturday morning watching the movie um just like hearing it on the radio you yeah know? i remember i got a halloween cd one year uh when i was older because it had ghostbusters on it but it was it was like one of those from walmart it was like a cover yeah <laughs> of ghostbusters so I, I was always like oh man why doesn't it sound like the, the original yeah and that's funny it's like the ripped version. It's like the the cover and, band version. That was, get it. That, have you ever seen were, like they? That's something they used to do, kids. Yes. Like, yes. Oh my god. CDs, and they like covered like all the Halloween the hits. Yes. You know, like even even Thriller, like you were saying. It's so weird because now it's all playlist based, and so it's instantly yeah. accessible. But back in the day, if you wanted the best of '80s hits, you better be damn sure to look at who the artist was, because it'll either say my original artist. 
or buy like a cover band that's just awful. Mm -hmm. And it's like terrible. I had a yeah. green like best of 80s CD that was nothing but terrible covers. Just like horrible yeah. covers that were put to a CD. It's, like it's so frustrating. Some Walmart executives uh, brother-in-law. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. But dude, but, back to this song real quick. I yeah. it has such a good drive. It's such a it build up like this right here. Then it builds up. Yeah. Well just like you have like the beginning and it like is all like kinda like playing on the creepy vibes and stuff. Um, like, and then you go right into this like bopping beat. And stuff like that, you know? Like right into the And you and know that's like Jerry, you brought it yeah. up too. This is diegetic music for the actual uh movie too. Yeah. It's in the actual universe, so we could probably yeah. we, we might be able to hear it in the new. Uh, movie. Oh my God, I was shit because they didn't use it in Afterlife, did they? No, they didn't. But it'd be great if like you had uh, man. Imagine Paul Rudd just rocking out to this. Something. Well, because he says the line, he "Bust is. it makes me feel yeah. good," which feel is good. not used. Busting is not used at any point in the movie, is it? Like busters, but that's about it. Do they ever use the phrase "we're gonna go bust some ghosts"? Do they? Um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. Sorry. I'm gonna have to like rewatch. I'm gonna have to listen. I'll do one of my favorite things in the world and rewatch these things. Rewatch you Ghostbusters. Know, yeah, I love it. You got like these. It's got like good movements to it. Like it's supposed to be a jingle, but it also yes. like gives the vibe. It's like it's a little scary it's a little you know what it's a little but it's fun it's fun do and you, a little creepy at the same time do you time. think that the cast or dan or you know harold Ramis and you know ivan reitman like were like oh my god when this one when they brought this to the studio do you I, think they were like i think they were like oh my I mean, god i bet dan Aykroyd. dan Aykroyd probably plays this blasts us out of his car every time he like takes a drive <laughs> somewhere that man just like promotes himself wherever yeah. he goes He's got like the, a Ghostbuster lined like jacket. Does he really? Yeah. That's got actually the, the no Ghost logo. So he's honestly, all in. He's all in. We had to play this classic, and we understand that. Yeah. And I wanted to know what you wanted to hear next, and we could talk about maybe what it means well, to you. And real quick before this, this goes off, like there was I don't know if you've heard of the controversy. I think it I think it was with. There was a a, a band that said that this was like stolen, like the Huey the, Lewis. Was, was it, is Huey Lewis I, in the news? I uh, want a, new I got a new drug. Uh -huh. I want a new drug. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Which um, I don't agree with because it really doesn't sound. I mean, like it. it. Yeah, it's got like a couple notes, but I mean, that with writing songs, like if you've ever written a song, like it's <laughs> I mean, it, there's only so many notes that you can yes, use, like, unless like, you're inventing new notes. So. I can play the Huey Lewis song just so we all can hear it. But I, I don't think in any way this sounds similar. I think the I just think the verses are I want a new drug. One that will make me mm. sick. Like I, I think music. just that's the it's part the music, that's, yeah. yeah, I think it's just the like See this doesn't sound like you know I mean I can I can hear like them trying to like be like oh this is freaking ghost. I don't you have the same B, but it's yeah. Anyway, hey, sorry, Huey Lewis. I love you, Huey Lewis, in the news, but yes, I've seen him. I've yeah. met Huey. He was actually very nice to me when I met him. He did. I did. I went. To, I worked a. I worked a private event uh, for a hospital, and he was the performing artist at this really nice hospital gala in Baton Rouge. And Huey Lewis was actually very friendly. And then he goes back to the dressing room, Ooh. and he goes. He apparently told like the service manager, like fire that little shit that came and talked to me. And like no one would admit that they wouldn't talk to him and took a photo with him. <laughs> it was me and Roach. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't think that Shit. song sounds all that much similar. Uh, yeah, it we both have a picture with Huey Lewis. But um, you know, back to the soundtrack. This one is the one I'm not super familiar with, only because I, there's a couple of songs I do like here. Clean up the town is probably one of the, my other favorite songs. But right. what, which one did you want to listen to or look at? Anyone in particular? Well, I mean, you you know, go ahead and throw uh, uh cleaning up the town on up there. You Sounds know? good. I mean, we'll do. And this is this when when does this song play again? Is this uh, right before the big fight? This is this is right when they're uh, they get the first call to go to uh, the uh, the oh, oh man, uh, I'm I'm gonna oh, I need to remember hotel. my trivia. They're they're going to the yeah the uh, I know the name of the hotel. You remember? 
the uh ah anyway i'll i'll remember it like ah, anyway here we go oh this is so iconic sedgwick yeah sedgwick hey, we got a call Ooh, we got oh a call. yeah they're freaking out man i love 80s this is so upbeat yes yeah. yeah oh and like they interviewed these guys on uh that that uh that that uh uh documentary i was talking about right? yeah right? okay and so what i didn't know about uh these guys the bus boys is they kind of do like all their songs are about like blue collar like working guys oh well they're bus boys that makes sense yeah yeah well that's the thing they're, like they were like they were sticking with their theme and they were like oh, we do the ghost song because we we're like oh they're worker they're working just like us you know oh and stuff wow. like that which was kind of a cool like uh uh I don't know, just a cool uh, little snippet they put in that documentary. So. See, I love no, talking this, music. This song. Sorry, yeah. you go on. You go on. No, I love talking music song. with you because yeah. you understand vibes. I'm sorry. You understand vibes really well. Yeah. You know? Well, and this one, man, this is like one of the second, like probably my second favorite next to Ghostbusters on there. It's just, it's it's got that like doo-wop sound that was yeah. popular in the early 80s you know yeah. like i mean a lot of people went the stray cats yeah the stray uh, cats mm -hmm. stray cats um didn't if there's that faint i mean on uh Step Brothers, they talk about billy joel uh, you oh know, yeah we, yeah yeah we do billy joel's doo-wop <laughs> yes exactly well they have that and um another big influence was stevie ray vaughn that he was bringing back blues because blues became yeah. irrelevant oh, yeah. but, but then you've got musicians like this the it's so funny. I didn't know this, but I'm looking up information on the actual Bus Boys, and apparently they were Eddie Murphy's like band. They played on like really? a bunch of yes. The Bus Boys toured extensively with the original lineup, appearing with prominent acts such as Linda Ronstadt, Brian Setzer from the Stray Cats, the Stray Cats, and ZZ Top. There you go. If they appeared on American Bandstand, Soul Train, and Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. And they played with Eddie Murphy on on his albums, so yeah, incredible. It's getting pretty oh. pretty great career and stuff, you know. Oh my God, okay, do you you may even remember this? Do you remember when the NBA had the boys are back in town? I don't know. On, 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 I'm sorry, they played on the NFL and it played for the NBA from 2006 to 2007, and they played a cover oh. of their version of the boys are back in town. That's so interesting. Really? Yeah. That's so that odd. Is interesting. But yeah, this is a fantastic song. It's just oh. so it's it's a lot of fun. It gets the vibes yeah. uh going, you know. Um it's it, again, it's like it takes me right back to that. The, the lyrics are just fun too. It's the whole yeah. like that thing back in the like I don't know, man. In the 80s they knew how to write like a a song about the movie. Of course, stuff that I don't think anyone can quite replicate anymore. I um, agree. Since since uh, Will Smith's "Here Come the Men in Black" uh, in 1995, <laughs> but uh, that was about the cutoff point. I feel like for me, the guitarist Vic Johnson. This is even more interesting. I I'm learning so. This is why I love doing this. Vic Johnson played on a, with a ton of people. This is insane. He for a while was a Saturday Night Live guitarist. Okay. He also really? okay. is currently Makes he's, work with Eddie. He's, he's currently since Sammy Hagar left Van Halen, he has been Sammy Hagar's main guitarist. So pretty much really? he plays nothing but Van Halen songs too. That's actually insane. That's who Sammy got because really cool. he, he plays, he still plays on Sammy's tours and he also plays uh, on a couple of Sammy's albums and songs. That's fuck. That is crazy. That's pretty awesome. Oh my god, this is so interesting to me. Oh, he plays at the whiskey. He plays. He plays at a bunch of places. So this is the kind of stuff I love when we talk about music. I, I've been since I was a kid. Uh, I'll tell you some more about a little bit of history on this. My my days, like o over the summer when I was bored, would be listening to music and learning about the musicians that played on certain albums, and then it would all interweave. Right. And I love that we can do this together right now in the form of a recording, and people can learn with us. Well, yeah, this. Fun. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. And this this song is probably one of the more underrated songs, too, on here. Um, is there another one you want to listen to, Jerry? 
Okay, pl play magic. I want you to play this and tell me where you think this song played in the movie. Oh, okay. All right. Let me hear you can play it. Okay. I think I have a hunch. I didn't look it up where it was, but I think I have a hunch on where it could end up being. Okay. Because okay. let me hear it. Yes. I love that that 808 drum beat a lot. Um yeah. Okay. Isn't this when Vikman is talking to Dana? No. Okay, hold on. Don't let me keep guessing. Let me keep guessing. <laughs> it's not what I'm expecting, probably. No. Okay, just say it. When it hits, when it hits, when it hits. So let's see. Uh, skip ahead just a little bit. All right. Okay, a little bit more. This is by Air Supply, by the way. A little bit more. Go to like closer to the end. Okay. You go back a little bit. <laughs> okay, listen for this into this. You'll uh, you'll recognize it when this hits. Okay. All right. I think if you didn't just recognize from that. Oh, it's the ghost. It's when the ghosts are launching up. Oh, it's, it's cool. When, like when they come out, yeah. Jeez. It just it sounds like it's a completely different song at the end. Yeah. But they only use this part. They only Interesting. Use this part. Dude, I kind of like it. It's, it's very a great song, Kong. though. I believe in magic. I yeah. Believe in magic. Yeah, this is when the ghosts are launching me up. Won. My baby told me it's what? Three times. Three times. Three times. Nice. Please. 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 This is a weird one. Isn't this great? Yeah. It's we it's like it's got the two it's like it's like uh, it's like a coin. It's like the I, heads and tails here. Yes. I like the idea of being able to sample this song just the drum beat. Like listen to that drum beat. Drum beat's been pretty fantastic. I Man, I love those power like choruses too like yes that. yes I it's magic. I believe it's magic this is cool it's a dude bum, 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 na, 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 do, do, do. yeah, yeah this, this makes the, sense now this is uh, when the ghosts are taking over taking over the ghosts are taking over so okay this is a good choice i like this one i don't is okay if i'm a second is disco and where is disco inferno at in this I don't know where these things are. Like, someone made, like, an extra special one. Disco Inferno might be playing in Lewis's apartment when he's having the... Uh, oh, the party. This is the official, official soundtrack here. I don't know yeah. why they... Somebody, somebody made a special one. Um, so if you could find... Uh, um, Saving the Day would be, I think, the next one. Wow, there it what is. You ready? The world? They got, like, a shit ton. Okay. So... The first two movies, especially, they haven't done it like in the uh, they they kind of try to do it in the 2016. Yeah, but uh, Afterlife and all of them didn't hit really have any uh, song when the Ghostbusters are going to okay. save the day or whatever. Like in the in one and two, there are songs when they are going to fight the big bad guy. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's always like uh, if in Ghostbusters, in this one, it's Saving the Day yeah, by the Elise Brothers. Uh, and then uh, in two, it is uh, On Our Own, which is a jam in and of itself. But they, yeah. these songs always get me pumped up. Yeah. Okay. These songs are pump up jams. So go ahead. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, press play on this one. here. I mean, just already. I love this. God, I love this 80 synth. I think last year at like they had like a Ghostbusters little meetup outside of the firehouse in New York City. And the Elite Brothers actually played their no synth way. Song, I think. I'm pretty sure. Or someone. What if I maybe the surviving Elite Brothers? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> the Elite Stepbrother. Yeah. That's the one. 
I'm looking up stuff about them if you want to keep talking. This is it's, it's, the first two movies. They're pretty much they have the same like structure where the ghost person gets put either in jail or in the crazy house, and yeah. then um, the mayor fires whoever put them in there and says, "Get them out. We need them." <laughs> and then they come out with a police escort singing a song like this. So. So they don't have anyway, that much. Yeah. They don't have that much on them, except for the fact that their all their hits have been played. Wow, hold on. Okay, got them good. Yeah. So Who's it says this. Day? Over the years, Alessi has arranged, produced, or written many songs, uh, written releases for many artists, including Paul McCartney, Deborah Gibson, Frankie Valli, Richie wow. Havens, Olivia Newton-John, and Christopher Cross. They toured with Andy so Gibb like, in 1978 to 1979. They contributed background vocals to Art Garfunkel's Fate for Breakfast and John Lennon and Yoko Ono's Milk and Honey album. Their songs have been covered by wow. artists including Peter Frampton and Rick Springfield, and their songwriting and or vocals have been featured in such films as the main event and Ghostbusters. Oh, they wrote a ton of jingles. That is what they were known for. Yeah, so songwriters. Wow. Just, just yes. songwriters in general. Okay, David Lucas. David Lucas apparently was a famous commercial creator, and they wrote jingles for Dave Lewis. Oh wow! Holy shit! They wrote, they wrote the theme, the Mr. Peanut theme. Really? I didn't, I didn't know they had a Mr. <laughs> Peanut theme. So the more you know, the Alessi brothers, man. That's crazy. This is so interesting. So they haven't had that many number one hits. Oh, they're also from on Long Island, which makes sense. And they still play. Okay. They still play. They were actually it's featured. Them, man. Uh, they were actually featured. Their song Seabird was featured in Taika Waititi's 2016 adventure comedy, The Hunt for the Water People, and Resident Alien, and Our Flag ah, Death. I've been watching Resident Alien. So this, their music is in that. So they, I wonder if they wrote the theme. That's a pretty, that's a nice, like, real guitar heavy theme. Like, just like a do 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 do, like a, yeah. I don't know, kind of like a bluesy guitar kind of sounding. Anyway, that was fantastic. a good choice. That was but a yeah. good choice. Well, if you want, Scotty, we can move yeah. to your favorite album because oh, uh, I believe please. there's not, there's not very many. I mean, there's Hot Night if you want to play that, but um, it's just kind of more, uh, it was just on the album. I don't think that was in the in the movie, and it's it's fine. Um, don't Ooh, don't come at me in the or come at me in the comments. Um, let's We've got see. on our own let's supernatural, the promised land. We're back. Let me Spirit. see what the, the track list is here. Let me see. Flip City, higher and higher. Man, that's the best. That is such a good cover. Of Dude, that. I've higher to and higher is a great week. one. It's such a good song. So okay, on our own is the the first one. The, the, there's this is all bangers, pretty yes. much. This really uh, is all bangers. Album. So you could even just start. Yeah, you could even just start at the beginning there. God, man, what if what a fun thing to do? Because you know sometimes soundtracks are like all my kids love the Guardians one soundtrack, and that's that's awesome. Yeah, because it exposes it's, people it's, to music. Yeah. Yeah, it exposes people exactly. to new music if it's done well. And this is obviously going to be an example where it was done oh, well. Oh, yeah. And I really, really would love for them to do a modern one because they did. They tried for Ghostbusters 2016. They didn't really do one for that. Okay, here we go. Then here's the other song when they're going to save the day right here. Which, honestly, I like this one, I think, a little more than this just saving the day. Yeah. You want something done right? You got to do it yourself. So good. Oh, yeah, I forgot the chorus. Damn. What a product of its era. Can you imagine, like, bumping this, like, when this dude came out? It's so, it says so much about how good mixing can still be. Because, like, yeah. I love the way this is mixed. I just love the. Oh, 
it's just you get you get lost in this right here. yes like, this is just it's it's a, it's not like super fast or anything but it's like it's like a good driving beat you know exactly it's got a really banging chorus gonna have to take it on control It's so hard. It's kind of nice. Yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty fucking great. Because this I I want them to like I want them to like do a showcase of modern artists that in this yes. way. You know what I mean? Or like people exactly maybe that like singer songwriters that aren't as well known. You know exactly. Just listen to this chorus. I mean, just, just listen to this. I hope y'all are just like jamming along with us with this podcast. This is like a great, uh, a great podcast to listen to at work. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All on our own. Damn, no, it's funny, man. I just want, you know, I just want to be in a car with yeah. you. I just want to be in a car Dude, with you. Because awesome. we've like, done that before. It, Dude, the Ghostbusters 2 album, like, is, is such a great one to jam to. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Too oh, cut to hand. Too cold right to hold. Now. To call the Ghostbusters in the end control. Well, all the wild slime was under the building. This is great. Listen to this. It's the entire plot. Vigo, the master of evil, try to battle my boys. That's not legal. <laughs> they mentioned the party. Throw a party for a bunch of children with all the wild slime was under the building. So good. <laughs> I see you guys are loving me singing over there. It's just, dude, the whole thing, the whole damn thing. It's so it's good. Wall to wall banger. It's just, there's not an inch of this song that is not up to, cranked up to 11, you know? And what artist is this again? Uh, this is, is oh, it's Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown. Bobby Holy Brown. Shit. Bobby Brown, man, hold on. Yeah, we got Midless Scotty. You guys have been too busy jamming to even look up uh, the, the artist. On this That's right. Thing, yeah. 100%. Like yeah, this is, a, this is a banger. All right, let's see. I mean, this is this can go in any party mix. It doesn't even have to be a Halloween party. Wow. That's what this I feel so like. Ghostbusters always gets kind of relegated to Halloween with the music. Yeah. Just play this at any party and tell me like, you're not going to have people dancing. Okay? Yeah, literally, dude. I, so I'm looking it up, and I'll read it to you. The song okay. did not do as well in, uh, well, I lie. I actually am dead wrong. So here's the charts uh, across the world, okay? Weekly charts. Okay. Uh, it's peak position. Australia, number 22. On Belgium, okay. 35. Canada, number three. Canada Dance and Urban Music, number one. Europe, number 18. Ireland, five. Netherlands, uh, six. Netherlands, top 140. Uh, New Zealand, one. UK singles, number four. And then I'm going to go to uh, kind of flip it up. West Germany, 18. Here is the US numbers right here. US hot R&B and hip hop singles, number one. US dance singles, number two. US club dance club songs, number 15. Uh, wow. And then, of course, most importantly, the U.S. Hot 100, it, it went to number two. It is that certified. Insane. It is certified platinum with a hundred with a one million unit sales. That's right. It, that's very insane. deserved. That's very insane. deserved. And uh, the musicians that played on this are very interesting, too. 
L.A. Reed on German percussions, Babyface on keyboards and backing vocals, K.O. on the synthesized bass, most importantly, Daryl Simmons, Melvin Edmonds, Kevin Edmonds, and Keith Mitchell, all background vocalists. All these musicians all had their own bands as well. Uh, After yeah. Seven was their group. And I believe, yeah, that was uh, that was all their group with, with Bobby Brown, who, of course, you know, played with a ton of people. And the people in this video, I did not realize yeah. this, included Jane Curtin, Malcolm Forbes, Amon, which, you know, the beautiful Amon, uh, I believe Amon was oh, yeah. married to uh, David Bowie, Victoria Jackson, Sally Kirkland, Rick Moranis, uh, Joey and Marky mm-hmm. Ramone of the Ramones, two Ramone brothers, yeah. uh, Christopher Reeve, uh, which is also pretty insane, Lori Singer, Doug it's E. Fresh, and Donald Trump, and Donald yeah, President, former, not that President great. <laughs> <laughs> former President of the United States. Donald former Trump. president, uh, current prisoner, hopefully. It, and, the, and it takes it takes place in three locations: the Trump Tower, the two, the world, the World Trade Center, and the Plaza Hotel. So back then, he was just some like rich dude who was like funny, kind of people, like funny because of the, the dumbass things he said. Yes, and, like that's yeah. the thing. Donald Trump was <laughs> was funny because he said dumbass shit bullshit. And then he became president and ruined things. So, <laughs> so funny enough, the uh, this genre of music, which I never knew had, it, I always thought it was just R and B or like modern R and B. It's actually referred to as a genre called New Jack Swing or Swing New Beat. Jack swing. It's really? it's very rhythmic. That's why I think That's we all cool. like it. So yeah, this is we're learning here. I, I never realized Bobby Brown. Obviously, I know he did solo stuff, but I didn't know he. Yeah. I didn't know this was his song. If I'm going to be honest with you, I'm well, impressed. He with... does. He does one more song. He does two songs on this album. Oh, actually. okay. So, so we're back. We're back is also his. So. Oh, let's listen to the we're back. Let's listen to we're back. Here we go. This is exciting, man. I, I, you know, Bobby Brown. Uh, that Bobby Brown, if I'm not mistaken, let me make sure I'm correct on this. That Bobby Brown is, of course, the one that was married to Whitney Houston from '92 to 2007. Okay. Yes, uh, that's that's Bobby. Oh, Bobby. She, Bobby used to be her drug dealer, which is so sad. Bobby. Oh, Ooh, Bobby. Bobby. Yeah, Bobby used to Bobby beat the y. shit out of Whitney, which is even worse. Yeah. So, so yeah. Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby's not such a great guy, right? It's a great song. It's great. Makes good music, but kind of a piece of shit. All right, here we go. Kind of a, kind of a shithead. Dude, I love this. Take, take a big boy. We're back. I'm going to look up some information on this. Dude, the mixing is wild. Yeah. There is not much detail on this song. No, I mean, he wrote two songs for this, and On Our Own is the most popular. Yeah, because where does this even play, Jerry? I don't think, I think this is just strictly on the album. They probably made it for a single. They probably did this as the B-side for the single. It's played... Or it, it's it's from the the what is it the the scene in after the courtroom they go we're back and stuff oh. and it says we're back on the you know they put like the the little uh, what do you call it? the little what, that little scrolly digital sign yes yes on the yes. side of the yes. ecto and it says we're, we're back. back for hire all that kind of stuff oh yeah okay that makes Fight sense the evil we will never deceive you um, I don't know if you want to so if you want to play. Uh, more of this, or go to uh, let's we got Supernatural by New Edition. Let's do that. Supernatural. Let's do that. And classic New Edition. New Edition, of course, huge band, late eighties, early nineties. Probably one of the biggest mm-hmm. pop acts that that kind of broke ground for bands like. I mean, it was it was really New Kids in the Block, and it was. I'm sorry, boy bands have been around forever. I was gonna say, but in terms of this sound. It was new edition that mm. kind of paved the way for pretty yeah. much everyone else uh, that came after people like Usher, you know, um, people, people even that still make music to this day that has the same exact sound. And uh, I did not realize this, but they have been a group since 78. Jesus Christ. I thought they were like a late 80s band. I yeah, that's crazy. 78. That's when Star Wars came out. But turn up a little bit. Okay, let's get a little little flavor here. I love it. Oh, 
These boys were all from Boston. Oh, all from Boston. So their band name was a play on the Jackson 5 because they saw themselves yes. as the new edition of the Jackson 5. That's how they saw uh, themselves. That's okay. kind of interesting. I like that. That's interesting. No, man, it's typical, typical. Uh, uh. Well, it's funny now, too, to think about how Ray Parker Jr. worked on Mr. Telephone Man, which is a hit by New Edition. I think it's very, yeah. I don't know. I love this. Yeah. It's like what you put on. This is what you put on when you like, you know, you, your girlfriend's coming over or something, you know. Yeah. Like a nice oh, dude. romantic evening. So when New Edition broke up, they formed Bell Biv DeVoe. I had no idea. Really? Yeah. Crazy. Oh well, that makes sense. The music musician Ronnie DeVoe is really on there. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I'm learning new lore. So originally in '78. Bobby Brown was in New Edition. Then he left. Really? Yeah. He was one of the the, the, the people that formed New Edition. Interesting. Okay. That is interesting. Yeah, again, Bobby, leave leave Whitney alone. <laughs> Crying out loud. Crying out loud, man. This is so yeah. interesting. Yeah, New Edition obviously had, a, had impact in the late 80s. Uh they actually just got inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Literally. I'm not kidding. Really? Like a week ago. Not even kidding. That's a, a week ago? Like, I, I'm That's not insane. Let's see. Let me That's see absolutely on. insane. <laughs> New edition Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Supernatural. And wait, did you already answer this? Where is this play in the movie? This doesn't. Like, so these are oh, all just kind of like the ones that are just. Yeah, so there's a lot of them. So if you want to go, let's see. Oh, Honestly, here we, here I would go. go. I was wrong. So uh, they did not get inducted. The Spinners did, and they performed in their honor because uh, I don't think that many members of the Spinners are still playing music or alive. Uh, so they were okay. at the they okay. were at the event in tribute to the Spinners. Okay, what's the next one you want to oh. look at, Jerry? Well, let's let's uh, skip down a little bit. Let's go to uh, Spirit by Spirit, okay. Dougie Fresh by Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh Crew. Dougie Fresh, and I don't even know who that is. A couple, a couple of these I know. Dougie Fresh, American rapper. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to learn. I'm going to teach you big. Listen, oh, th I think this one plays during the credits of the film. So if he was correctly. a beatboxer. He was a beatboxer. And really? that's what he was okay. known for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh he is best known as the human beatbox. He's a pioneer of American beatboxing. Uh Fresh is oh, wow. able to accurately Ooh. imitate drum machines and various special effects using only his mouth, lips, gums, throat, tongue, and microphone. This yeah. is not really, maybe maybe this is all a beatbox. Oh, this song. is this is the one here. Uh, skip to the beginning Dig or back to the beginning Dig again and listen. This is actually part of the score of the film. Oh. Okay, At I'm gonna play here. I'm gonna play a little loud. Okay. Dig it. Just that little. Dig it. Dig it. Oh, dig it. Oh. Check it out. That's, you hear that at moments in the film. Okay. That might be his voice. This is great. This is amazing. Damn. It's pretty good. I love this one. I'm learning about our friend here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you some more things, while I'm playing. Right? Uh, <laughs> he 
Uh, so Fresh, oh, no. when he when Dougie Fresh began, he was best known for performing with one of, I believe, to me personally, one of the most groundbreaking rap groups of all time, or hip-hop groups back in the day. He, uh, he was associated with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, okay. which, you know, made one of the biggest early 80s hits of all time uh, from Harlem. They were, they were a Harlem group, and he grew up. Uh, and it's weird. I think they kind of wanted to stick to East Coast musicians when doing this yes. because he grew up in Harlem and Manhattan. Um, but this is where it gets interesting. Looking at what he did, he... And this is what it says right here. I want to make sure I'm reading this right. He <laughs> is a huge contributor to the Church of Scientology. Ah, uh, well. Okay. He, uh, he is a huge contributor, but this is where it gets interesting. He, Elrond um, got him, too? Yeah, it got him. Uh, he dealt with foreclosure. And three and a half million dollars in unpaid mortgage mortgages on three homes, survived thousands of uh, sur- several thousands in credit card debt, and tax lien issued from the IRS. He has a foundation called Hip Hop Hip Hop Public Health, has been a spokesperson spokesperson for that organization in Harlem for a long time, and uh, yeah, so he's he's probably not doing his best, but yeah. you know, we all have our moments, we all have our ups and downs. It's all right, Dougie Fresh. We're we're still, you know. <laughs> Listen, right, you can leave the church at any time. You can leave yeah. that church at any time. Just like hide yourself in somebody's trunk. I don't know how much so. he performed on though. I don't really that much about his discography. Uh, he had albums. Let me see. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, Dougie Fresh discography. I don't really see all that much. Yeah, he didn't really have that many hits. So. I'm still looking. It's okay. Listen, sucks. Dougie, Dougie Fresh, uh, I'm sure Elron loves you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Elron thought you were great. Not a bad choice, Jerry. I like that one. Uh, is there another no, one no. to do? Uh, okay, so there are three more on this one. And then we I gotta think end, we can we got to end on the on. best one. We've got to end on the best one. Now, okay? we, oh, we will end on the, the okay, that's the last track on the on the on the the album actually. <laughs> My favorite. Um, then we'll go to a couple songs from 2016 and then uh then we got a little special thing at the end for you guys. But okay. um let's do Ghostbusters by Run DMC. Oh, I love which it. Which is the new version of the theme song for this film. Yeah. They did. Let's see where this one of the is. this is I I like this one just as much as the Ray Parker Jr. classic. Wow. Right? Really? It's up there. It's it's up there for me. They're both there because it's, this I mean, had it's the a, same thing. This had a designated music video, if I'm not mistaken, didn't it? Yeah, it had yeah, its own music video. I think video. so. OK, let's see. They have different. Uh, OK, I'm looking at the lyrics. Is it pulling up, Jerry? The there lyrics are different. I love the the organ. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And of course, this plays during the montage after. Oh, this is a little different right here. That's okay. Still good. This is what plays. Here we go. Oh, you know what this uh, is? Eight oh eight. What? This is this is the one that I think with like the the really uh, uh, it's it's like a, a a remix of it I think. Oh okay, let me find the original then. Hold on, Ghostbusters rap. But Ghostbusters by Run DMC uh, plays during the uh, montage after the courtroom scene, right? Where they go, oh. hey, we're back, you know, and then it's like them like going and catching all the, which is honestly a better montage than the first one, right? Yeah, um, yeah, it's just so much fun. Okay, let's see. It's got the Doppler effect and everything. Yes. Ghostbusters rap. Okay. There isn't much details on this song in particular. I find that interesting. There's barely any. Okay, this is the... the banana. I'm afraid, you know, no, no. See, it's just 
it's got the spirit still, but then yes. Damn, this is good. It it hits good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Do with right. Nothing but like the things that go bump in the night. Well, see, and I can, like, I can see the montage too as this is playing. Yeah, you know, like them catching all the different types of get, This one has a little bit of a rock to it too. Yeah. Bridge, hit it. Oh, that's cool. See, yeah, put a little bit of the flavor in the middle there, but faster. Yeah. The cartoon was like exploding at this yeah. time, right? Like everyone, like they, they, it was real popular with kids and everything. So like this was a great like twisting of it a little bit. Like it still yeah. has that flavor. Just as iconic in my opinion. What's up with that noise? Way funkier. Actually, way funkier. I never thought I'd say that. It's a funkier version. This is released as a single, and it was not featured yeah. on an album besides the soundtrack. I was say, just the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. There's just some great moments in this. There's one like, uh, like I love the ver my favorite verse. I think is coming up. Here. There's yeah. a couple, like the last two verses, I think are my favorite. Yeah, they're right here. I visited the grave. First talks about what you need to be a Ghostbuster and stuff. <laughs> Which is like, see, just, just a fun, a fun song. But this is weird because this is like the come down of our, our, our Run DMC's career. I mean, they had the mid '80s. Yeah. They had the Walk This Way cover. It revolutionized yeah. the genre, definitely. But like in terms of it being like. This is so it's what a weird time for this to be hit. And it was a hit. I'll read you the stats on it while it's playing. Yeah. Um, Australia number 56, New Zealand 34, and UK 69 did not chart in the United States, unfortunately. All right. But it's interesting what did chart. So you got the new edition yeah. song charted. And that's so interesting to me that, that that version charted. But this version, which is just the theme and a reworking, did not chart. Anything. Right. Right. What's the next one you want to hear, it's, Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so uh, let's do f a little bit of Flip City. Flip City, please. okay. Glenn Fry. Flip City, and this is... Yeah, man. The Eagles. This is, the Eagles. This is... This song is... Uh, again, the montage is really kind of like hit harder in this in, in the second one for me. Uh, but this yeah. is where the ghosts start taking over Manhattan again. Uh, in Ghostbusters 2, like whenever the slime is flowing, the Ghostbusters are locked away uh, in the insane asylum. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just that this has got like a really good, it's got the creepy vibe, man. Like you just kind of really feel, um, you feel the, uh, the craziness and the, the despair and just, and also just the fun, the wildness of like, Hey, we're listen, there's like a bunch of crazy ghosts out there right now. So I found this. I'll share this with you real quick. This uh -oh, is Glenn uh -oh. Fry's like early '90s website. It's like still his website. <laughs> this is an angel and, fire, dude. Look at this. This looks like a nightmare. What but is this? Is this like this is what it looks like? It, 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 it looks like it's it got the memory. slime behind it. 
it and looks loving like the slime behind him. Because he died. Oh, wow. Uh, hey, Google. When did Glenn Fry of the Eagles pass away? Glenn Frey died on January 18, 2016. He died, died in 2016. And I don't know why they never felt like they should update his site. Look at this. They even, even has a section for downloads. You can get avatars, icons, and banners. Oh, his wallpapers. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Look at this. this is like look at this. Why Those did they never do beautiful. this, Beautiful. Dude, this is look at this. I will take this. This is like this is like the most MySpace ass <laughs> shit I've ever seen. But funny, the the only link that was still active about this, there was no Wikipedia. There's not even a, a Ghostbusters Pedia on this, but it has the lyrics to uh, "Flip City." Flip City. My grandfather and H. Walensky. <laughs> look, stream Ghostbusters to movie clip with song in the background. Oh, it's like an unavailable. Mm. It's like an unavailable YouTube video. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, anyway, we'll go back to Flip City and talk about this. Let's see. Let's get this Flip City. Just the vibe, like absolutely wonderful vibes for this one. Yeah. All right, here we go. The gong. Oh. oh, sorry, Jerry. Let me try that again. There you go. <laughs> Remix. Here we go. Dude, that 80s guitar hidden. So good. Okay, like that beginning is when the, the shot, when the slime is kind of going through a crack in the concrete. Oh, okay. And then here you got like people coming out of the like theater of Cannibal Girls and stuff. Again, uh, Ivan Redman, one of his first popular films. God, he's a good just, songwriter. The lyrics are, are are great, and then just like the, you can feel the uh, the urgency in the music. Yeah, it does. It has a really good. Uh, it's, it's kind of tight. It's like it's a good like. Oh, things are going crazy, but it's also a really good. Here's a really cool song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So this was not released. Oh, I'm sorry. This released yeah. as a single. No, it did not. It was strictly a soundtrack. Oh, did just on the soundtrack. Wow. So for those that don't know, oh. it hits so hard, doesn't it? This is very 80s for It's not like yeah. It's so I'm gonna pause it. This for those that don't Go know, ahead. Glenn Fry was like the main songwriter for the Eagles. He wrote hits such as "Take It Easy," "Peaceful Easy Feeling," "Tequila Sunrise," oh, "Lion Eyes," <laughs> "New Kid in Town," and "Heartache Tonight," which is like mm-hmm. some of the biggest songs from the late '70s, early '80s. So, like, oh, yeah. let's just take a second and appreciate that. But to see him do it this way, I mean, he was in the Eagles for years. Like, oh yeah, like. Like to, to see him perform it this way is actually kind of incredible because this sounds way more like at the time contemporary, like almost kind of punky, dun 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 dun, like eighties. Yeah. Um. Oh man, I would I love. I mean, why don't punk, more punk bands cover this song? This is this would be I a fantastic know. song for them to cover. This I did not realize this is actually very funny. Not funny. It's kind of sad. Uh, his final performance live ever was in Bossier City, Louisiana. <laughs> that he died shortly wow. after. Wow. Yeah, Aww. it's pretty interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna keep playing this song. This song is at this song slaps. It's it so it goes so hard. This Ghostbusters 2 was clearly where all the bangers were at. Yeah, I, mean, that's, I agree. That's all yeah. We probably could have saved this one for last, but I thought it was important to go chronologically, you know. I agree. Just listen to this. Listen to this. It's that that eighties synth with like that whatever like uh, pedal they were using in the eighties. Yes. For like a, a electric guitar. It's like a chorus meets distortion. It's like this weird combo. Yeah. 
There's like nothing on this where the Titanic shows up for uh, Cheech and Cheech and whoever the other guy is. It's not Cheech and Chong. It's just Cheech. There is nothing on who else performed on this. Just all him. It's all Glenn. It might be. I can't find anything. Maybe. No fucking way. What? Steve Lukifer from Toto, who is one of my favorite guitarists, played on this track. But he no plays way. guitar on this. Yes. He is. This is so interesting. Hold on. No. Wow. For those that don't know, Steve Lukather was a studio guitarist who played on everything. From Michael Jackson to, I mean, apparently Flip City. I mean, he played on everyone's tracks. I, I just all over the place. That. This is so interesting. Wow. Oh, my God. I love how I'm going go to that, I'm gonna listen to that solo that. again. I'm going to listen to that solo again because that is Steve Lukather now that I see it. Let's see. Shout out to my boy Eric Cotterman. Let's see. He loves Steve Lukather. Here we go. I can hear it. Oh my god. I can hear it now. Smoking. That is amazing. Wow, Jerry, you taught me something That's new. Great. I love this. You're welcome. Yeah. I love doing this. Literally, you just used Google. That, um, that, but still, that was cool as shit. <laughs> I had no idea Steve Lukather. It's a great so, song. Yeah. That that is, and for those that don't know, I just want to actually include this real quick. Steve Lukifer, uh, obviously of Toto, he made uh, <laughs> he made the Dune theme for the '80s Dune uh, movie. Really? So that's just a little fun fact. Yeah, like you can hear it. Not that one. Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Not that one. But, uh, actually, this Dune to me has I wouldn't say better music. Sorry, a little dude ran here. But this dude probably is a more badass theme besides the woman doing like that primal shouting. Uh, yeah. Hold on, wait. It's not the theme I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the. There's one theme that's just freaking awesome on here. But dude, it's so funny who who performed on what. That always kind of interests me. You know what I mean? Like right. what musicians? What musicians? performed on certain stuff and here's here's the main title theme i love this song this song's absolutely incredible but uh yeah i mean steve lukather wow this just blew my mind i'm gonna go on a kick now the problem with doing this jerry is now you know you say you'll be up all night after a bomb bad cast i will be up all night yeah. listening to music you, I just you're gonna I be you're gonna be listening to music yeah this theme is so good it's not bad it's just, it's, it it's this. Yeah, do the, the, the now dude songs just have that motif, not so much a theme. This theme. Yeah. Yeah, this theme goes hard. But anyway. This as, 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 as Lady Jessica would put it, the beauty and the horror. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to Ghostbusters. Sorry, I had to go on that tangent for a second, buddy. No, it's just fine. Fun, it's fine. Fun, All right. Well, hat. hey. Get out your toasters, go. kids, because we're about wait. to go higher and higher, baby. We're so about to excited. do it. Let's get the Jerry, toasters hi- out. Coat the hi- inside of your statue. So I know they well, referred to the Jackie Wilson version at the beginning. In in the movie, when they the put movie. the the slime in the toaster and make it dance, they are playing the actual Jackie Wilson one. Yes. Or Jackie. Yeah. But but whenever whenever we get that big walk through the streets yeah um of the statue of liberty which that was in the first two ghostbusters movie you just got to have something giant walking down the street yeah um 
they are I'm playing okay. they're playing the Howard Huntsbury uh <sighs> version of higher and higher and Scotty like since we watched it that night Scotty's been obsessed with this uh your kids you said were like really yes, really like, on that. I like this song it's, this yes. is really 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 good it's a very yeah. good and I mean if you've heard the original like go look up the original it's a it's a great fantastic one but um this God, just it's a great it's a great cover it is a yeah, fantastic is. cover it really it is be, ready it might be better. who knows here we go like it more than the original. get ready to be uplifted this this defeated a, a 16th century uh god tyrant Good vibes. The good vibes from this song alone defeated evil. Uh, look at that, like, oh, that face, man. Damn. This could, this Make sure could to unplug your toasters so yes. they can have free range mode movement. This could heal people. And just such a fantastic song for even just the theme to the film, where the slime is the congealed negativity uh -huh. uh, under the ground. And we gotta fight it with positivity. We got slime, and if we're positive to it, it can be a, like it can be just as strong. Yep. And just to, bl to blast this to get people to like come together and like kind of like really like help uh, neutralize the the evil stuff, man. It's just yeah. This is just such a great, really storytelling, fantastic song to have in that moment. Keep going, don't stop for me. All right, you guys sing at home too, okay? Here we go. And <laughs> it doesn't get any more 80s than this, like, keyboard. No, I love it. I'm telling you. It's so easy. Just proves that like you don't have to like do something like crazy technical no. for it to just be like at like keep it tight so well. Keep yeah. it tight. That's ah, good. Absolute. Go love. This has been so much fun just doing this. A lot of fun. We've been doing this for an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> this feels like no time has passed though, whenever I talk music with people I can do this forever. yeah i can do this maybe 10 hours to not be as yeah just, tired. Just, just, just flown by it right yeah yeah okay. saxophone can i have that saxophone solo 80s oh, yeah they, man we loved the saxophone in the 80s you sure i was born we with lived, the saxophone who's we lived in a good time <laughs> We lived in a good time, yeah. Listen, back when the old listen, when the president played saxophone on on national TV, you know, back when that was what the president did. Oh, yes. then that president then did win and like, yeah. So there is he made that. a mistake too. He made, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We'll forgive him. I got Apparently, my presidents out. are not great. <laughs> yeah, they could be better. Ba, 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 what a perfect song. Ba, 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 ba.
Yeah. What a perfect song. I'm so, so serious. Good. That is such a good song. Yeah, that one, that one's peak for me in terms of song. It can't get much better than that. Like that, the perfect, you know, climax oh, yeah. song, the perfect um song to round out an emotion of of let's bring the city out of despair. All all it takes is good music and love and a symbol that unites us all. And of course, it was a Statue of Liberty. Uh, I'm excited to see where you're going with this because I don't know where you're going with this. I'm very excited. With so next, what? What? With the next one? Okay, so yeah, with the 2016. Next okay. Uh, look up, look up Ghostbusters by Fallout Boy. We'll just listen what? to a smidge of this. What? Because that was the that was the they build that as this is the Ghostbusters theme song for our movie. Um, and then they had like five other versions of someone singing Ghostbusters on the album. What? You want to listen. Like they, so, this is listen. This is so 2016. So, and again, uh, shout out to Buck O'Brien out there. Uh, Walk oh. the Moon is his favorite band, and Walk they Moon's did a, a cover band. of Ghostbusters that plays during the credits. Oh, um, Pentatonix <laughs> did a acapella version of Ghostbusters. <laughs> I did not know. This is this. the problem. This is the problem. Is like if you, uh, with a modern album, they tried it, and like everyone just wanted to do the Ghostbusters theme song. But I feel the Fallout Boy version of the is they at least tried to do something different. And again, I know I'm a punk rock whore. Uh, I I like Fallout Boy and all that kind of stuff. Of like you know, grow up, blah blah blah, whatever. That, you know. <laughs> But anyway, just play just play a little bit of this uh, okay. Fallout we'll Boy. You've it. never heard this one. You've never heard this one. You're telling me. I am ready. Here we you, go. You may have. Never. I don't think I have. When here you... we go. Okay. Here we go. I, I can tell you this much. I was in college at the time, so I was very much in my own realm of music that I did and didn't like. Fallout Boy would have been yeah. one I liked, but I don't think I would have seen this one. Let's here we go. No, yeah, this is there you go. Get that Fallout Boy rhythm to it. Yeah, a little bit. This is so interesting. I did not know this existed. This came out. They released this as a single right before the album came out in the movie. Oh. Okay. Was it I a never, surprise? Like, it. When I was following this. I was like, I, I was like, Fallout Boy did it. Oh shit. It's a good cover. I like it. That's kind of a Jack White. But they did, see, and they did their own thing. Ghostbusters, parentheses, I'm not afraid. They changed it up. I'm not afraid, not afraid. It's kind of like when they did the uh, Extreme Ghostbusters in the 90s. They changed up the yeah. theme song a little bit. It just reminds me of. Yeah, but yeah, you got Mr. Elliot doing a verse uh, towards the end of this, the grid. Oh, okay. Versus. I don't know if they play I like one. <laughs> I would love to go see them and they play Ghostbusters, though. <laughs> they probably never played this live. I shout. I mean, they might have. Ghostbusters! <laughs> I'm not a fan. Fuck, dude, they got paid for this. For a lot. They were doing like a Magic 8 Ball thing at their concert this last year. Oh, okay. For songs and so I would have loved if this popped up. And here comes Missy Elliott. It, just, it has the DNA of the first two uh, yeah. songs in mind. I like that there's a little bit of a rap to it. It's like a combination of the... It's like a combination of the Run DMC version and yeah. the original Ray Park. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a friend, not a friend. Anyway, uh, if you want, I mean, we can finish this if you want, but you can also, after this or now, whichever, whenever you want to do this. Let's do it now. Go to Get Ghost by Mark Ronson, Passion Pit, and uh, I believe what? Is it ASAP, ASAP Ferg? Ferg. Yeah. What? This like also played during the cre- plays during the credits. And by the way, they like the 2016 Ghostbusters is like credit. It's like it's like just entertainment all throughout the credits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Is it is it good entertainment? I can't wait to 
I can't wait to watch it with you. I want to. I want to get. I want to keep you as unspoiled as possible. Okay. Um, okay. I have no idea. Because again, again, I don't hate the 2016 Ghostbusters. Yeah. I just anyway, I have my own thoughts on it that we'll talk about whenever we come to that. So but Sunday. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's hear. Oh, good. Sunday night or Monday or Saturday, whatever night you're, you don't have to worry about Eleanor or whenever oh. she's out or she's sleeping. We got to watch. We got to watch this. Movie. Oh, we gotta, we're going to have to watch. Next okay, yeah, we're, oh, wow, so we're nervous, coming up to it. So nervous. Okay. And we I'm both had to get it to it originally, which is so funny. We yeah. both, uh, we did not mean to. Own that's this. one that they, there's one that like they, that's one they gave you like a handful of movies when you like uh -huh. open up an account. And that one's yes. included in it. That one's um, just gave it to me. So yeah. But let's let's uh, hear a little bit of Get Ghost here. Here we and go. After I'm, this one, I got one more. Oh, I'm so but, excited. But uh, I love. I mean, doing if you want to, oh, dude, this is a lot of fun. We get this it. Is so much. Fun. I mean, it's hard to do this with like Star Wars and stuff. I mean, we could do that too. Um, of course. But, like, I would love to do more music episodes. Yeah, because and as as a listener. Let us know what you think if you're enjoying this or not. All right. Here we yeah, go. if you so love this, bad. if you if you if you're annoyed and want us to just like get back to talking, you know, uh, I don't know how how big Waddle's dick is. Just let us know. Here we I go. Kind of like it already. Saw it coming is also on here uh, by G Easy. That's pretty good, but we can yeah you can look that up on your own. Ooh. I like this stuff. That show, that show, scares you the most. It's not, it's not bad, right? I kind of like it a lot. Me and Scotty, next time we get together, are just gonna have like a Ghostbusters uh, music. Like, I, I want you, I, I want to see, I want to hear you mixing these songs. Yeah, I could do that. What are you saying? Because you can literally mix this into the original theme. Like, it's the same yeah. notation, the same key. Oh yeah. So, what were you gonna say about it? I was like, gonna say, like that little bit of the original theme, right? Yeah, the beat. So I can literally take that and then mix the original theme in and like have it flow yeah. seamlessly, and then that can blend with the rap. Like you can do a medley of this, no problem, effortlessly. Yeah, this is cool. Um, I like. I like. You can clearly hear. I can clearly hear Passion Pit. I don't know much about ASAP yeah. Ferg, but I know it's Mark Ronson who mixed it. But you can clearly hear Passion Pit's influence. Yeah. Synth See, there's a part kind of this, this this is even like and they didn't play this like at the part of the movie where they're like bringing them like coming to save the day or anything like that yeah. this is in the credits but it's got a part where it's like funny how you're calling on us now it just it fits that it fits that spiritual vibe yeah with the other songs of like having that like which is again i love that they went back to, and they're just really highlighting the elmer bernstein score for yes afterlife and probably this new one but we don't know like i man if since we're back in new york if they gave us a little bit of a like various artists uh album yeah. i would be over the moon Me over too. the moon for it because afterlife uh i guess we could talk about that now unless you want to do one more song from this is there one there's more song? one more but like i mean we could talk about afterlife too if you want to but the the, the last one i want to play and this one I'm trying to remember. I think this one is in the movie, but okay. this is just a fucking banger that I put on like multiple playlists that aren't even Ghostbusters related. Okay. But look up Good Girls by L. King. This one, this one slaps. I love, I don't know if you know L. King. Yeah, she's, um, she, L. King's the daughter of, uh, this might blow your mind. L. King is the daughter. Hold on. Let me look up L. King. Pretty sure she is Rob Schneider's daughter. I'm not even kidding. She really? Hold on, wait. Yes, Rob well, King. L King is great. She's is Rob Schneider's daughter. What the fuck? That, well, she's got a that great wild? fucking. Like, she's got the great fucking raspy voice. Oh like, yeah, she's uh, got a like great a, voice. Yeah, she's got a great voice. Anyway, so you probably heard some of her still. Like, so I don't know if you've heard this one or not. Then, but uh, right, I'm gonna click let's it. Go ahead and let's see. Yeah, let's get that one down there. The yeah, music video I've never seen. Has that big hit, I think, Blood in the Cut or whatever it's called. 
Yeah. Uh, blood in the... Like, I, I gotta think. There's, this is the big a... hit for me. This one right yeah. here is, is the big hit for me. And honestly, this is the big hit off of the soundtrack uh, yeah. that I loved. That my, you know, uh, the, the, the ex-wife, uh, the Christian ex-wife didn't really like this one. And you'll see X's why X's and O's. That was her big song. X's and O's. X's and O's. I want to look up more of her stuff because I love her. Same, same year. X's and O's. Marry me, L King. I'm oh, sorry. That's all good. A little bit of the black keys sound. Dude, this is very original. This is very original. This chorus you won't be able to get out of your head. Here we go. I'll go out with the pain, 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 Man, it's like when I be at a concert like this, you know, it's like this like, is good. This is my shit. Yeah, I like this one. That's a good one. Very good. It's, it's I don't know why. Like that one's always stuck with me, and probably because I've always been a child of hell and just not even noticed. Noticed. Yeah. Um, but um, it's I'm joking. Great one. Um, listen to this. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So, and now we kind of come to again. So, Afterlife really focused on that Elmer Bernstein score and everything, uh-huh. which is again fucking fantastic. Yeah, I think both of us. I don't know if we talked about it on mic, but when we were watching Ghostbusters two, we both talked about how that was kind of a really cool score. It would be yeah, cool to get unique. notes of that, like yeah. in there. It was very like late eighties, early nineties, um, but had a lot of really cool hero themes. Like the hero theme mm-hmm. for them when they're going to save the day is is very good. Like the the actual like the what was it a uh, kind of like a da 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 da. Anyway, they have a really good heroic theme. Um, so if they were to do a modern ghostbusters soundtrack like th- of the first two and i mean even to a lesser degree the 2016 version the 2016 is okay um but if, if i if you could have your dream what what did, let's compile together what would our dream lineup be for a modern ghostbusters soundtrack akin to ghostbusters one ghostbusters two and let's go more like what well, what would be our modern Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack? Like, well, what would you I want thought, on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? So Frozen Empire, one thing I will say is the trailer was Cruel Summer by, um, God. Uh, I want one. that to be in there. Yeah, so that obviously was hearkening back to, you know, the 80s, and that Bananarama. That mm-hmm. was a very popular song in the year 1983. So, dun 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 Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna pull it's that up. Perfectly so, set up vibe. Yeah. yeah. So it sets up that, and obviously it's based in the summer, cruel summer. You know, it, you you can play off of it, and the song itself is kind of a timeless song. So, uh, you know, if I were to do a, a modern version, look, we'll we'll listen to this while we talk. Well, uh, and I, I'm gonna say, modern, like, you could, like, it doesn't have to be just modern. You know, okay, like we could throw in okay. a couple like classics, uh, like this. But uh, yeah, yeah. What what are your modern picks? I got a couple too. This is fucking great. Um, I would have loved to have heard this, and, I, and maybe we might still. So I, I do love this song. When it used it in the video, my jaw was dropped because I'm like, this is a cool song. Because you automatically knew what it was setting up. Cruel yeah. summer. 
not going to be an easy summer. And the lyrics of the song are very cool. Like, the lyrics are going to be right here. Sweeter than heaven, burning with food around. So, like, it, it sets it up. It sets it up. Like, oh, it's all That's hot. It's perfect. It's, it's New York. Hot. Look, yeah. they got literally shots from New York. So, all of a sudden, it gets cold, right? Like, this is a great yeah. line. Two voices are saying. This fits say? perfectly. Yeah. See, with Ghostbusters music, it's it. When I think a song, it's it's fun, cool vibe. Yeah. A little bit of a little dash of creepiness in there. A little bit. The cool or mystery. Cool. Yeah. There's something into this song. I hope it gets used. I hope it gets used a lot. Cool, cool See, yeah. oh, if, it's, if, it's if, fucking great. If, if you're going to stick with the 80s, you know, I, I I have some dream hits that they could obviously pull out. I would love to hear a Van Halen song in a Ghostbusters. Like, imagine hearing Panama be pretty great. by Van Halen. You know oh, what I mean? Like, yeah, just as they're driving. That would be so ideal. So, like, there are things you can obviously do with that. You know, and you got to think realistically, what do they have the money to spend on for songs? Because usually movies, a lot of the money does go to licensing and having the chance to actually, like... I would shit if I heard Panama. But you got to think realistically, you know, this is back in the day when bands would be a part of soundtracks. It was simply because of relevancy and that they could be a part of the right. soundtrack. Like they didn't have to be. You were asked to be and you can always right. confirm or deny. But not. But back in the day, people wrote songs for a soundtrack. Now, most soundtracks, at least in the modern era, most musicians don't write songs. This is a Bond movie. You know what I mean? So like right, now right. they just take popular and contemporary songs and throw them in there. So yeah, I guess my 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 top three would be I would love to hear a classic 80s song. I would love to hear a classic rock like like you know, like Panama by Van Halen. But I also wouldn't mind to hear something from the nineties. I mean, something something that speaks New York, you know, would be important. Yeah. Like uh there's a KISS song called New York Groove, which could be cool. Oh, but like cool. you know what I mean? Like there you'd and, and if if I could do modern, like you know, and this is not very modern, but yeah. What are your modern yeah. picks? What are your modern picks? I would love to hear Green Day. If like, if I can have them do a Ghostbusters Ooh, version, you know what that I mean? would be pretty you know, cool. That would like be pretty they would, cool. You know, I, I don't know. There, there would be, there'd be a lot of musicians that I would like to hear, and obviously there are contemporary musicians that could make a song for this. They could do a cover of the Ghostbusters theme successfully. Hey, the follow up boy one was like, fun. When is when is when is uh Dead Poet Society coming out or whatever it is? Uh, uh, April twentieth or April nineteenth. Hey, maybe one of those is gonna be on there. Dead maybe one of those is gonna be on there. Did I get it right? It's, oh, tortured it's, it tortured poets. Tortured poets. Not, not yes. Dead Poet Society. My bad. Yes. Oh man, Taylor. Uh, TPS. Call me TPS. Tortured Poet but, Society. <laughs> tortured Poet Society. Well, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead though. Like, did you have any other picks or something for that? Um. Honestly, you know, they can always revolutionize, like, and do something. They could do like James Gunn did with the Guardians. He, like, changed the landscape with that that with that with one movie in terms of soundtracks. Yeah. And, like, everyone oh, yeah. realized how important soundtracks were after that movie came out. And uh, we hadn't had a good soundtrack in a long time. And I'm not saying uh, Frozen Guardian Empire. 3, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I, and like even that though was more of a modern take on a soundtrack because they could use modern music with the Zune or not so much. Right. But like, oh, well, yeah, the early early aughts. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I want I want a classic rock song. I want a I want an eighties pop song. A Cruel Summer would have been great for me. And uh, I, I want Cruel Summer on there. Maybe I a contemporary so. contemporary cover of something. You never know. I don't know. They could do a contemporary cover of Possibly. like Take on Me. Like you know. A, a, a great example of soundtracks. I know you've watched it recently. Probably was the Mario Bros. movie. I don't know if L is yeah. obsessed with that, but like they had "Take on Me" and a bunch yeah, of like classic soundtrack them. songs. So yeah. I don't know. That's my thoughts. What about you? What are you thinking? Okay, so I put a few that I kind of like, or I, yeah, artists that I would like to see do okay. a song for this, like modern artists um in my playlist my bomb bad makes me feel good playlist which you can still i think i shared it to my yeah. my Twitter. if you have apple music feel free yes <laughs> but um i would love to see uh rena uh Sawayama okay do a song 
for a Ghostbusters movie. And the one, but if you wanted to use just one of her songs that already exists, okay, I've got "Who's Gonna Save You Now," that is uh, that is on my playlist. "Who's Gonna Save You Now" has that same vibe of the either the ghosts are coming to get you or taking over. Or yeah. we're listen. We're coming to save the day. Who's going to save you now? It's going to be us. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Let's listen, listen to it a little bit. I'm gonna say. I don't know if you've heard this one. This is a I my fucking favorite. Rena Selyama. You've told me about her before. I'm not really familiar with all that much of her music. Our friend of the show, Trey Mitchell. Uh, he loves. He 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 put me on to her. I, I and anyway, yeah. Rena Selyama, y'all. Here we go. Already got that kind of vibe. This badass. This is gonna be not a YouTube episode for sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is great. He's gonna save you now. He's gonna save you now. Damn, Jerry, this could be really good. See what I'm saying? Get Rena on there. Yeah, and I uh, like that. I would put. I, I mean, I would. I would love to hear uh, again. Alden's favorite person in the world, uh, Dua Lipa. I think could do a pretty oh. fun song. Okay. Um, I don't have I don't have a specific Dua Lipa song uh, in mind. I didn't put one on my, but I was like thinking Dua would be would do a pretty good Ghostbusters. Here's, um, here's oh, what in the world did she cover? Don't bust. This is called no, it's Don't Bust Now, which is a mashup between Dua Lipa and Ray Park Jr. Okay. If it's something strange, <laughs> holy shit! This it's is pretty cool. fucking good. This is obviously not a real Dua Lipa song, but it's, uh, it's obviously it's, it's not. Mashup, but, but I would see, I would love to see her do, like, hear her do one, you know? Yeah. Um, also, uh, this band really has the creepy vibes. Their name uh -oh. is Creeper. Okay. Okay. Look up, look up Cry to Heaven by Creeper. All right, here we go. Oh, I like this. I don't, I don't know if there's just like a video lyric. Yeah, we'll try to find try to find a safe version. Uh, Creeper is very okay. Here we go. That or well, that's full album. Okay, I can do that. Hold on. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Now, yeah. Cry to heaven. Here we go. Here we go, baby. I love that. They're very, that they're very horror themed. Yes. So. And we've, we're suspecting this one's going to be a little bit higher in the horror. Ooh, yeah, well, like they've it. said they, they're pushing it like it is. You might actually really like this band, actually, now that I'm thinking. Th especially this album. This. this album goes classic. It's kind of so like it's Dio. It's hard, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, like early 80s Dio. Oh, this is that a little more of like a NCR vibe in their earlier album? Little punk, but this is pretty great Ooh, dude, that sounds like eight. It sounds eighties. Sounds very, like synth. Like his voice is so like he sings and and they've got a girl. Uh, uh, one of the girls in the band sings as well. Yeah, it's really really great doing going through. See, this is great. See, it's got the vibe. It's like yeah, a little it creepy, a little ooh. ooh. Here, we'll let the we'll let the chorus hit. Ooh. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Rad as hell, right? This is amazing. <laughs> really, really fucking good, right? I love it. Okay. Hot milk. That's a, I think, hold okay. on. So hot. Let me see if I if I'm getting the right. Uh, let's see if it's the right. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
play Party on My Deathbed. Okay. By Hot Milk. Party on My Deathbed. Party okay, on My Deathbed. Say. Okay, let me look it up. This one, this one, uh, no, never mind. This one's not explicit. So I'd imagine this is wishful thinking. Do you think it could? You never know. You think it could be possible? Of the, getting an album? I think it, I think it's, it's possible, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll just, we'll just get a little bit of vibes from this one. This is a little more, uh, uh, heavy, punky vibes. Okay. Here. All right. You ready? Let's hit it. Oh, I like it. It's kind of industrial sounding. I really oh, like dude. this. It's Wait. the drums I like. This whole app. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I like, really like this. <laughs> this is like, man, you just like right. This is this is music like uh, Wayne's World would be right. Yes. You like the modern, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? This is like the modern, uh, Ozzy and all that kind of stuff. A little bit, yeah. Or maybe not like, not, not like, just like these people really, uh, focus on, oh, hold on, this is great. I love those samples. This is cool. Great, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, uh, I, uh, oh, you have extensions in your hair. Yes, I'm definitely still recording. Sorry. Just can you just surprise Whoa! me? Whoa. What's up, Katie? Anyway. Kids? Uh, anyway. Yeah, no, that's a solid pick. I, you know, what's funny when it comes to like really exploring the idea of this, I really would love to be able to go and like buy the, buy a vinyl album or, or a CD yeah. or, ha or buy it something, on iTunes. And something have that opportunity man i mean it's pretty awesome well, well speaking of katie katie would approve of my last pick we don't have to play any of these any of these songs or not but like yeah uh, ludo you know the band yeah. ludo oh of course that um, was great like poncha train and stuff uh -huh. like that i think yes. they would write a fantastic they in fact they just released a song last october called no uh a where a werewolf uh was it a let me look at a canadian werewolf in st louis i think really is the name of the song it's yeah, it, 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 it's hard see i would i would enjoy if they brought back a new york flavor to to some of this stuff like you could do some lou reed you know it's a classic new york band you could do a oh, it's classic. an italian werewolf an italian werewolf an italian werewolf place. that's hilarious yeah ludo has this great song about new orleans right here this is the yes. it's a fucking great song it's great i just they they do a little bit of that horror vibe too, you know. Yeah. You're just like, I think they could write, they could write a good song about like when things are going to shit, even you know, yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, and, and and I think it's important too to acknowledge that a lot of those other songs are about like the horror of the moment. You know, like yeah. all those songs in, in the first, in the, at least the first soundtrack and the second soundtrack are about encountering things that are scary you know what i mean so this this it really, right. really w would work really well with that theme and you know i never realized until, until talking to you about this like there is a interconnected nature of all these songs which is kind of interesting to reflect on they yeah. all they're all meant to have this uh not not overtly creepy but definitely uh way on the creepier side than i thought they yeah were. does that make sense you know to I me mean? like they there is a connection yeah. there so interesting i mean i didn't realize that it is it's Halloween music adjacent for sure. Yeah. But like, they, yes. like I said, like it doesn't have to be like, you got the songs on again, a lot of the songs on ghostbusters too. Uh -huh. the, that album I could just be played at like a normal party kind of exactly. Thing, you know? Exactly. Um, but yeah, no, you know, it's just like that sense of foreboding, but also fun uh, is just really what I think it needs to have. But yeah, I, mean, I would love for them to do uh, a new album, but even if they don't, man, even mm -hmm. if they don't, uh, I will be making playlists until my dying day. But Hell you yeah, guys brother. out there, we want to hear your, uh, what, what songs what would, would you, you put on a Ghostbusters soundtrack? Like, tweet exactly. at us. Yeah, let us know. Let us know what you guys would put on your uh, soundtrack. 
before we sign this thing out, let's play some music and then we can we can sign out using this music. Uh oh, let's Jerry, do it. Let's do it. uh coming up soon, just so we can say that again and kind of get the plugs in yes. the way. Uh let me turn this down a little bit. Coming up soon, we got a bunch of fun stuff for everyone, including this Thursday, yeah. talking about the lost medium of Ghostbusters. Uh and then on 312 next Tuesday, the infamous 2016 uh oh boy. female uh all-star cast. That offends people with penises. So it does. Yeah, it makes it's very them, upsetting. It makes them very angry. <laughs> very <laughs> grumpy. Mo- just super grumpy. And then Ghostbusters 2009 video game discussion on 314 Pi Day. 319 Ghostbusters Afterlife discussion podcast. Then 321 Ghostbusters Frozen Empire reaction and review live. I uh, I'm so glad we could do this today. You have no idea. Oh yeah. We've had a great time discussing this. We need to do this more often with other we need you know to. franchises. Because this is, this makes me so happy. And hopefully YouTube didn't take it down and destroy it. And hopefully you can hear it on Spotify, Anchor, and um, whatever streaming platforms you have. Because yeah. it's going to post on all of this, them. This is, this is our a, most copyrighted uh, audio episode. episode. Yes. Yeah, this it's, is an audio is, episode for sure. Uh, don't forget, we are going to, I'm trying to remember, we, we're going to be giving away a cop, uh, digital copy oh, of Ghostbusters 1 and 2 yes, soon as well. Yes. So uh, stay tuned for that. Be ready for that. Get ready to enter for your chance to win that. Um, But yeah, guys, we got a lot of really fun stuff coming up. Uh, I'm going to make Scotty watch uh, so much more shit. A lot more shit. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun. And Um, uh, yeah, no, listen. uh, Hang out with us. Go follow us on uh, Twitter. I almost said Facebook. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Facebook, too. (laughs) We're there. Um, but follow us at Bombedcast. Follow me at the Cannon Junkie. Yep. Scotty at the Scott Jero. Yep. Um, and yeah, uh, check out Ionized Bastards, all that kind of shit. Of course, and check out my Midi Chlorines video essay if you haven't yet. It's yes, a complete analysis on everything Midi Chlorines. It's got about eight hundred and something views. So let's get that thing going up. If you take your time, show to it watch to your it, mom, but, uh, your grandma. Show it to them on Easter. Like honestly, that was, that's the perfect video. <laughs> on Easter, piece. the perfect video for Easter. That'll be how we market it. But um, yeah, everyone, uh, what should what should everyone do, Jerry? Uh, you should, you should uh, make sure that Bombad makes you feel good. Yes, and you should also uh stay Bombad and let your toasters dance for crying out loud. Let the toasters dance. I get it. He sounds just like Jackie.